one night Cha Cha had had enough, ladies and gentlemen. He flounced to the fire pit, throwing his hands together to create captivating shadow creatures that scurried across the cavern walls while he regaled them all with tales of heroic hyperbole. Like me? People Do like me. Hi, like this me. is Merlin. Welcome to Merlin's People Like Me, a web series devoted to the greater New York LGBTQI community. Come with me as we meet up with Neil Arthur James, creator, writer, press agent, designer, and masterful magician of a new and refreshing icon of queer theater, Dandy Darkly. Hi, Merlin. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh... Neil. You can also call me Dandy if you want. One of the interesting parts of being a performer with an alternate persona, you know, it's deciding when and where uh, the names come in. I think he's a drag king. Uh, definitely if, if I'm out in Dandy drag, I prefer people to, to of course refer to Dandy as Dandy Darkly always. He gets very fussy if people refer to Dandy. As Neil. Yeah, I'm from Georgia originally. Grew up in a very small rural hometown in northwest Georgia. My grandfather was a storyteller and I um I loved it very, very much. I have recordings of me as a little boy saying ghost stories at five years old, barely able to speak, but just possessed of that passion to tell stories. Yeah, for me it was never the the big glamorous divas or the um, supermodels or I mean I was certainly obsessed with Wonder Woman who wasn't in the 70s you know but for me it was the mean the mean old queens like Paul Lind and Charles Nelson Riley and Liberace all those bitchy old sissies I understood what they were talking about you know I understood their little jabs and their and I and I understood how they were making everyone laugh and and I kind of also felt such sympathy for them because they all seemed like they were just so miserable and there was no like, I you know what yes, I mean? Yes, I do. You look lost, baby, <laughs> lisps Paul Lind as he took Center Square and hot new game show, Dead Hollywood Queers. Sit to my left, cha-cha, you'll make my bad side look better. Ooh. They were joined by Noel Coward, Coco Chanel, Plato, James Baldwin, Lord Byron, Keith Haring, and Alan Turing. The quiz show hostess was infamous Hollywood actress Joan Crawford, and Paul seethed with envy when Turing went instantly, but honestly, it didn't take a hero code breaker to determine the answer to every query would be everybody. No wire hangers! <laughs> the major themes of what I write on are sex and death, uh, how creation and destruction, you know, the pleasure and pain, how the two of them all kind of weave themselves together, uh, particularly for gay men, particularly for me, coming who I came of, I came of uh, sexual maturity at the height of the AIDS crisis, so I was a little closeted gay boy in North Georgia, seeing, you seeing and my just, also. yeah, just seeing death on the television screen, knowing that that's what awaited me if, you know, if and when I came out. And or did anything. Or did, yeah, or, or, or had sex, I would be dead within a week, you know, or whatever. I guess around 2008 was when I started writing a website uh, about this embittered little exorcist who lived in this sort of fantasy version of Manhattan. And it was about Dandy, it was uh, Dandy Darkly. As fate would have it, a friend of mine who was a vaudeville uh, producer and performer who really enjoyed my website, had a Halloween cabaret show at Stonewall oh in 2010. And he knew that I had a background in performance and so suggested, why don't you come and uh, perform, perform, this, perform one of your stories as Dandy. And it was, a, it was a smash. With a single gesture, Cha-Cha invented mythology. <laughs> He also invented dinner theater. Yeah, you, you win some, you lose some. As a kid, I was obsessed with all sorts of uh, different mythologies. The whole story of Persephone. That's a great myth. It really is powerful It's, it's one of my favorite myths. Now, it was there in the underworld, amidst the fossils and the forlorn, where Sephi truly found herself. The flower taken for granted above was cherished below. Never abused, never broken. 
speaks to um, cycles, you know, like the cyclic nature of the seasons. Uh, um, spring awakening and, and the beauty of that with flowers and everything and then just the the mournful loss of, of her daughter and Demeter casting the world into the frozen wasteland again when Hades takes her back every year down down beneath. Hades doted on his queen like some exotic Amazon orchid. Persephone was a flower that required darkness to fully blossom. It started off, um, Dandy was very focused on the macabre and the occult. Yes, and, I remember um, some of that. The supernatural. Even the name, Dandy Darkly, it's kind of happy and dark. Really, Dandy is truly a, a solo endeavor. I mean, from the costumes, the makeup, the backdrop, the press, the, the posters you see hanging on the walls, everything Neil does himself. The name of the press that has issued the uh, Dandy Darkly book. Gay, gay Bird Press. Is gay Bird Press. Oh, you have a copy of my yes. book. This is Dandy Darkly's 666 Tales of Sex and Death. Any statement or anything you would like to say? Oh, <laughs> I've said enough. Honestly, yes, it's, it's really, um, what do you mean by that? No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, thank you, Merlin. <laughs> no, honestly, thank you, Merlin. I'm happy to come out and be a little, little, have a little chit chat with you about Nandy Darkly. Well, it's been a delight to sit here under the trees on a park bench somewhere in Fort Greene Park. Isn't Brooklyn. it wonderful? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Mwah. I appreciate this. <laughs> Your incredible physique. I know, I know. Sir, eyes up here, please. Oh, my goodness. Merlin's people, people, like, people me. like me.